Father, Captain Lithen has reported to me that the cosmic radar has picked up an unidentified spacecraft which doesn't belong in our galaxy. I fear this. It's Oraklon, the king of the night. In our galaxy, I've always reigned defending peace and justice. But Oraklon, the powerful king of the night, wants to take over my kingdom and territories. Sire, we have the weapons to defend ourselves. And everyone is ready and willing to fight. We cannot remain pacifists. We have to face this enemy. Oraklon has more advanced weapons than we have. Sire, we must put Plan Epsilon into action. But the Epsilon plan is still untried. It has to complete final testing. Well, we may have to use it anyway as a last resort. We have no choice. I herewith declare a state of emergency. Everyone to his post. Don't worry, Father. I'm sure we'll overcome the dark forces of evil. Bellstar. Oraklon is too powerful and too greedy. It will be an unequal fight. And I foresee the end of our beloved Exelon. No, Father. I'm sure our planet will come through in the end. It has to.
Jamal. Yes, my lord. Have you activated the anti-gravity systems? Yes, my lord. Good. Now put me in contact with that stubborn king of Ixalan. At once, my lord. Zeno, can you hear me? I can see and hear you. Speak. I'm sure you understand that this is not one of my usual peaceful reconnaissance flights into your galaxy. You've made yourself very clear, Oriklan. Then you surrender. It's useless for me to surrender. You'll still destroy my subjects. Therefore, my answer is never. So be it. Ixalan will be destroyed because of your blind stupidity. Good riddance. Jamal. Yes, sir. Prepare for attack. Yes, my lord. All units, turn on the laser barrier. Switch over to direction control. Course 4013, 15th dimension. Counterattack with our forward observation craft. No, Lithum. I will not sacrifice any human lives in a hopeless battle. Very well. I'll use the remote control attack modules. Control room, prepare the attack modules for launching. Fire one.
suicides. Keep firing. Direction control has been hit. Emergency systems. Say, Lord, this is only the beginning. <laughs> Sire! The central computer received a direct hit. Our only hope now is to obtain help from our ally, Antares. Lithan. Yes, sir. You're the only one I can trust with this... with such a dangerous mission. Take my daughter with you as my ambassador. But, sire, what about the defense of our space station? I can't... I'll take command of it. We'll throw up a shield of mega rays to cover you during liftoff. Very well, sire. Now go. You haven't much time. Good luck. You too, sire. systems! The hydrogen booster units are already at 6,000 mega degrees. Give up hope, Bellstar. We'll not only get Antares, we'll get every king in the galaxy to fight at our side. Oroclan's days are numbered. Three, two, one. It's your turn. <laughs> All units stand down. Mission accomplished. We can return to base now. Someone has managed to elude me. Bell Star. You galactic idiots! Imbeciles! Bell Star and Lithin are escaping! We are not returning to base 
until I have their heads at my feet, whatever the cost. Horaclan has discovered our escape. Still, we have a lead on him. And our craft is much smaller and easier to maneuver. Yeah, and much slower. Increase speed. Assume delta formation. The course? Is zero three nine two. I repeat, three nine two. They're coming at us from all sides. Check the pressure of the defensive shield. I'll start up the magnetic generators. We'll make a run for it. If we drop away on a zero tangent, we'll come under the influence of Krithos. Its negative gravitation will thrust us into deep space. The defensive shield is operative. All energy levels are go. Well, now we'll find out if the Epsilon plan really works. Ready? Yes. To deceive me, you have failed. No one from Ixlan is going to escape death. Especially not you, the daughter of its king. Huh? Fire! Fire! I've isolated the inertial circuits. The damage is limited. The left quadrant indicates we're off course. Right, the computer is already handling that. We're protected by the Omega unit, which is activated automatically the moment there's a navigational malfunction. How did they manage to disappear like that? The cosmic radar scanning rays can no longer pick up their signal. Jamal, we must find them. Use a megametric teleprobe and scan the whole eastern galaxy. Sir. Wait! Including the equidistant conic tangents. Yes, my lord. Calling all units. Deploy in delta formation. Lower altitude by a thousand degrees. <laughs> That's over. But the emergency power units are not sufficient. When they give out, we'll be adrift in space. Forever. Where do you think we are now? We have no way of telling. I propose we land on the first asteroid we encounter and try to repair the navigational system. And we can't even go back. Oroclon will still be looking for us. Right, and if we land anywhere, we may not have enough power to lift off again. Well, let's see how much maneuverability we have left. We're getting nearer and nearer to a heliocentric point. What solar system is it? It's impossible to calculate for sure.
Listen, come and look at this. I don't see any volcanic deserts, and there are no visible craters. It's completely unlike any planet I've ever seen before. What strange colors. This is where we can make our repairs. Bring us closer. It's amazing. I've landed on planets all over the galaxy, but never without charts or surface coordinates. Well, do you want to risk it? Yes. Check the composition of the atmosphere. According to the computer, the atmosphere is oxygen and nitrogen with a small percentage of carbon dioxide. Perfect. I'll keep your fingers crossed. Oh, <laughs> 
That's not exactly what you'd call a warm welcome. No. Somehow we must make them understand that we come in peace. We can try. But I've got an uncomfortable feeling it's not going to be that easy. I saw a giant flying monster come down from the sky. It landed over there, and two people in strange clothes came out of it. They've come to destroy it. Did you do anything to, to harm them? We tried to talk to them, but it was impossible. They have supernatural powers. I say they're not human. Yourself. They're in the ravine. Wait here for my return. of a planet have we landed on? Evidently, these people are 20 or 30,000 years behind our times. We must take the women and children to a safe place. In case they attack, we must be prepared. But what can we use for weapons against them? What is that stuff? It's water. I once saw some in my father's collection of intergalactic minerals. What do you use it for? It's two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Huh. No! What are you trying to do? Are you crazy? <laughs> hey! No! <laughs> 
You have no reason whatsoever to be afraid. Now hide among the rocks. I promise you that before they can harm us, we will capture them. Follow me. Up there. Or maybe they're over there. them before they can use their weapons. I don't want them hurt. Come. Strange. I could have sworn they were coming from here. What do you make of it? I guess it was an acoustic phenomenon. A repetition of sounds that played a trick on us. Let's get back to the ship. intention of harming you. Take them away. I really can't understand. Here we are, prisoners of these primitive people. Let me use my beta ray. We could blast our way out of here in seconds. I know. But I'm sure with a little patience, we'll be able to convince them we don't mean any harm. 
Silence. Silence. That's enough. We agree, all of us, that they must die. They must be burned. They must be burned alive. Their bodies consumed by the flames and their ashes thrown to the winds. In this way, their evil spirits will be destroyed forever, along with their bodies. choice. We're not of our world. We cannot risk being destroyed by your supernatural powers. And so my people have decided that you must die. Yes! longer we're going to put up with.